Hey, what's up? My name is Ben. Like like Mrs. Lane said, um, I went I went here about about three years ago. I I went all four years. Like like Mrs. Lane said, I'm Ben Johnson, and today I'm gonna tell you my life story. Like most life stories, mine began before I was born. But the difference in me is, my story began when my mom was going through a divorce. And as painful as that may be, at nine months old. She want, we moved to California so I could find a male mentor. And my first male mentor was my Uncle Gary. My, and I, and I, from what I remember from Uncle Gary is all, all of the laughter, all of the games that we used to play, that's where I got my love for video games from. And going in my stand there and just dancing and dancing and dancing and all and all the music and ev everything was joyful and happy for a while and but at 18 months my mom noticed that I wasn't developing correctly I, sh I should have been walking but I was still crawling and it was later found out that I had cerebral palsy have any of you ever figured Know anybody with cerebral palsy? Okay. Fair, fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Cerebral palsy is a neuromuscular disorder, which <clears throat> means the brain does not connect to the muscles. So, so because of that, I went to physical and occupational therapy. Phys physical therapy is where you work out your legs, you stretch. You learn how to move and you stuff like that, move your head, move your arms, move your legs. Occupational therapy is when you move, learn how to with your hands, like squeezing your hands and stuff like that. I also went to speech therapy so I can learn how to talk. And it's because of that, at four years old, I said, I love you, mommy. Just right, right before she was about to, about to just teach me how to do sign language. And my, my first benchmark, that was my first benchmark. My next benchmark would come from at five. And I remember I was standing in the hallway like this. Could two of you come up here for a second? And I remember I was doing, I was doing like this. I remember I was holding on, I was holding on, I was holding on. And before I know it, I I took off. I took like oh, okay. I I took a step. <laughs> and I I remember my mom cried. Take my hand. Um, I remember my mom cried and I cried and she called everyone in my family. And when I, it's okay, y'all can sit down. Thank you so much, y'all are awesome. Um, when, I was, when I was six years old, I also would go to therapy for my, for my balance. I would ride horses at a place called Project Ride. And for a while, I learned how, to, it also helped me in my occupational therapy as well. I would do, I would clean, I would clean horses with brushes, which helped me with my hand motions and stuff like that. I would throw ring, I would throw balls into rings, as well as play with the horses. And uh, the next benchmark would come from when I was when I was nine, and it was a thing. It was Thanksgiving, two thousand six. I remember we went to Ohio, and it, and as, as any of y'all been to Midwestern Mills, we have they have have any of y'all been into a, spe a smelly. Midwestern basement. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> and, but I wanted to get down there because that was where the um, flat screen TV was. And at the time, there was a Star Wars marathon. So I wanted to get downstairs every every day, so I, every night, so I can watch the Star Wars marathon with my mom. And I would sit there and I would, and I would just cry, cry, and cry. 
and my auntie begged my mom, let let me um let me let me carry him downstairs. She'd be like, nope. Because she always she wanted me to always learn to get someone might not always be there when when you need when you need them. So after some after some after a while, I just learned how to scoot, scoot like this, scoot like that. I would scoot downstairs and I and I and I did it. And I was like, wow, that was awesome. And then I met possibly the greatest mentor in my life. And that was my stepfather. My stepfather when I was 10. My, his name was Demar, Demaris Miles. And I, and I, and then him and I connected very quick, quickly. And the funny thing is um, every, every day, we, my mom would cook breakfast and this healthy breakfast. And we were like, we're gonna go on the road and get it on the road. My mom thought we were just getting something healthy on the road. Turns out we were just going to McDonald's every day and, <laughs> go, and going to McGriddles. It was like, and I was like, but that, I loved it so much because it was our bonding. We bonded, we bonded together. We bonded because and it made me, because I, I never had a father up to that point. He, he's, he's gone now. He died when I was 17. But. Moving on, um, he also he also taught me that um, he also taught me how to get in the truck because up to that point, he and my, my mom had to lift me had to lift me into a truck. Imagine carrying a big nine year old into a truck. Imagine. Um, and I remember just I was I was in a garage I was in a grocery store. And I was, we were just walking, me and, me and my, uh, me and my stepdad, we were walking into a, a grocery store and he saw me take my walker and I was literally picked up myself and sat on the walker. I'm like, you're that, I'm like, boy, you that strong? And I'm like, yeah, cause he, but from that moment on, he made it his mission. Because he figured if I was that strong to lift my arm, take my arms, and pick myself on to that walker, I could get in that truck. So he made it his mission. Even though every time he picked me up from school, the teacher aides would cry and they would beg him, like, let me help him with the truck. He'd be like, nope. Because I was like the type of man he was. He was very firm and very to the point. Mm. Yeah, and, and I got into the F3500 truck. He didn't care how much I cried and pleaded. And I got into that truck. And I and I love him every day for that. And but even with all these benchmarks, my body got so contracted and weak and tight that I needed surgery. Because let's go backwards. I because I I let's I didn't want to do exercises. My mom would do home exercises. I would go to therapy. They would tell me to do exercises. But I wanted to grow up. I wanted to grow up to be like all of you. Like all of you, I didn't want to do exercises. I just wanted to play, go outside, chill, have maybe have a drink, and maybe just chill, be normal. And I just, I just wanted to be normal because I felt like all my, all, all my friends, everybody at school, don't have to go home and do exercises. Why do I? But my body got so contracted and tight that I need, sur need surgery. So I had surgery on my hips, on my, my hips and my legs. So my, by the end of surgery, my body looked like an A. I had a huge bar between my legs. It was a red bar, I, can, I remember to this day. And my body was like an A. I couldn't turn. I had to get, I had to get it took two people, to, to a couple people just to turn me. And my whole body looked like an A. I was supposed to have a third surgery, but my mom chose against it because I was so severely depressed and that wouldn't be the first time I was severely depressed. So she chose against it. And because of that, I had to go to a care home because my mom couldn't take care of me for a while because I needed so much care. And then I went to a care home. I don't have many good memories from that care home, but what there's, one memory. And these, these, Baker and Tachi, you should remember this girl. I had a friend named Sydney. 
I've known this. I've known Sydney since I was ten years old. Ten years old. She would she would come to the house every single day, and she would not every single day, but every weekend. And we would just play video games. We would we we would chill. We would watch TV. We were like it was awesome. We were like chill together. We're in. No, and I read, even though I don't have that many memories, that was the one shining light from the man from the man upstairs that taught, that um helped me get help me get through it. And so, not so many words. I came home on my fifteenth birthday, and I came. And I remember I came home. I I had to get back to normal because I didn't feel right because I because I gained a little independence so I could go home. So, but. And within a, within about a year, I got my first volunteer job, which I got my 40 hours for. I worked at the Boys and Girls Club. And I remember our duties would sometimes would make sure like, make sure the kids are in line, get, get the kids snacks, just hang out with the kids, help them with their work, make sure they don't kill each other. Um, <laughs> Uh, like that was that was our job, and I remember the most. We, and I remember the sweetest thing they did for me. It was my 16th birthday, and I remember it was a huge surprise. I remember, and I would just we were chilling out in the break room, and everyone was just like, "Oh, oh, Ben, we gotta go to the gym, we gotta get to the kids," and I remember. They made this huge like lunch for me. They made this cake for me. Cause I wasn't expect expecting anything for my 16th birthday. I just thought this was that was so like the sweetest thing. One of the sweetest things ever everyone has ever done for me. And and then then about a couple months later, it was homecoming time. So I remember because I'd never been to a dance before. So I remember I'm getting, getting all fixed up, getting all fixed up, getting my hair, getting my, getting my, um, I was in Burlington. I remember I got this cool leather jacket, black leather jacket, which I still have to this day. And then we, I remember I got this blue undershirt. I remember I walked into the um, high media room and I just remember seeing everybody I, I knew and I just felt so, so, so like I felt touched. I felt like everything else didn't matter. I felt like I felt like I was just me in that moment. And I slow danced the first for the first time too. Yes, fun fact. Um, so then, then there's the next thing. I found I found love. Yeah, well, that's funny. Um, I, I won't say I, I like this girl a lot. So I remember we would hang me we would hang out every every day, every single day. And I remember this is this is this is so awesome. She understands me. She understands where I'm coming from. It didn't matter that I had cerebral palsy, she understood that. And I just felt like we we connected. And I remember going up to um Apple Hill and like going to like a flea market. It was like a flea market. I remember finding this little trinket. It was called World's, World's Greatest Teacher because I remember she wanted to be a special ed teacher. And I remember taking an apple to her and just feeling like, like this is my moment, this is my moment. It's like a magic moment. I know it sounds corny as heck, but <laughs> it, does, it does, but but I felt in that moment. I could, I could do anything, right? So I took the apple to her and then just say I just I just knew she didn't feel the same. I just leave it at that. Um, and I remember going home. I'm like, I cried for a little while. I cried. I remember, I just remember thinking, mine will come soon. We all been through heartbreak. No, then well, most of you will go through that tonight. So, so my next benchmark was it was time for senior project. Um, do y'all still do that, senior project? Um, we do sometimes like that. <laughs> oh, okay. So it was, it was basically senior project time. So 
So what I did was, I, just, I went to my advisor, Mr. Wong. He's an awesome guy, awesome teacher, by the way, Wong. Um, and, I, and I remember asking him, what, do I, what should I do for a senior project? He was like, I don't know what to do. He was like, what do you, what do you want to learn? He was like, I want to learn how, how to like ride a bike and learn how to swim. He was like, you should do a triathlon. Oh, uh, oh, uh, they know where I'm going with this. Um, so I did, I remember, I did, I did the proposal. I did all the paperwork. And I remember my mom was all for it. We got two personal trainers, one to teach me how to swim, one to teach me how to do exercises and do everything else. I went there, I went to, I went to swimming every week and I did, I went to the gym every single, every single weekend. And I remember when I got there in San Francisco that day, nope, nothing else mattered. I did the swimming portion and I swam in the, in the life jacket. My mom, I remember my mom just like cried. And it was like, and she cried. And it was like, let me, for those of you who know, don't, don't know, triathlon consists of three events, running, biking, and swimming. So you swim for about 10 minutes, you run for about 15, and you, and you bike for about 30. Yeah, yeah, sir. Yeah. So, so we get to the, and I get to the running portion. I get to the, uh, my favorite portion was the, uh, the running portion. And I remember even, even, ba even Baker was there. And I remember everyone in my family was like cheering me on, even, even complete strangers. I remember feeling like, like, dang, like, they're just cheering me on. Little me, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just Ben Johnson at the end of the day. But I feel like I, I really, but I felt like I felt special. I felt like, wow, I just, this is like great, one of the greatest moments of my life. I remember I just kept, I just kept doing it. I just kept doing it. My advice, how I felt when I completed it, I felt like, yes, this is my moment. This is, this, this is so awesome. Everything, everything was coming together. Everything was coming together. And the last benchmark was graduation. So we went to JF, we went to um, JFK and we graduated there. And that day we were there reciting like, how should I get on stage? Should I use my wheelchair? Should I, use, should I just walk on stage? I just wanted to walk on stage like everyone else. And I would have given a speech too, but I had to decide, do I do a speech or do I complete my reading vlogs? <laughs> So I decided just to put it up on the blog. But I just remember walking across that stage. And I remember I proved all the doctors wrong. I proved that doctor, and what, I proved that doctor that told my mom that he's never gonna just put in a wheelchair. He's not gonna amount to anything. He's just gonna be a, like an invalid. And like, I proved everyone that like, I could do anything, anything. And like, I thought of all my heroes all of my heroes, and, uh, like people I met here that, that I will cherish, cherish, cherish for, like forever. My time here, because I, this is like this is the place that molded me. Like when I came here, I was kind of like, I was kind of shy. I was kind of like quiet. I was kind of. I've always been nice, but I was like kind of like. But I, 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 I found the foundation of me here. And, one of these, these are one place that found the foundation of me. And I, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I then I went to American River College, like she said, and I, and I found my freedom. I found out what I want to do. I could do anything. I could take any class I want. I could, I could, it was literally limitless. And, and, and I guess the greatest lesson I've learned now is, um, it is, this will sound corny too, but I guess the greatest with the greatest experience is it really comes with age and age and um, knowledge and age and knowledge and experience. And I guess that makes me I guess that makes me a grown I guess that I guess that makes me a grown up. And, um, that what. I guess the greatest lesson I can I could teach anyone. Don't just because don't that's gonna sound corny too, but don't judge a book by its cover, because 
Like, cause we can be, we're not, we're not, we're not deadly. We're just, we're just human beings at the end of the day. And um, I, my foundation of me is strength, my faith, and my caring, my love, and my hero. I am Ben. That's all I am.